hey guys welcome back to my channel so in today's video i'll be talking about how to host a static website on s3 and i'll also be telling you what static websites are benefits of hosting them on s3 and how to do it step by step so without any further ado let's get started so the first question is what is a static website so basically static websites are web pages that are delivered to the user exactly as they are stored without any server side processing so they are usually the usually the simple pages like html css and javascript pages and they don't have any dynamic content in them so this is your static website and it could be easily hosted on s3 and there are several benefits of hosting it on s3 such as scalability reliability and it is also cost effective and you only pay for the storage and the data transfer that you use so finally let's see how you can host a static website so for your uh, for your information sake i would like to tell you so whatever we are going to do in today's hands-on session it's not paid it is being included in the free tires so it Amazon allows you to use certain services in the free tier for around one year and S3 is one of those services and within some limitations. So I'll show you the website where you can check that what all services are allowed to be used in that free tier. So let me show you that website where you can check that whether the webs whether the service that you're going to use it is included in the free tier or not. So this is the link where you can check that whether the services that you're going to use on AWS, whether they are free or paid. So you can select in this filter 12 month free and always free. So let's see if I select S3, uh, let me search S3. Uh, it is already there, but let's search for it. So you can see that S3 is here. So you can use it like it is available under free tire so that means uh, you can use it for 12 months for free and then it includes 5 gb of standard storage that is monthly and it also includes your 20000 get request and 2000 put request monthly so this is something that is being included in the free tire so you can go ahead and use this particular service anyways whatever services i'll be using in my tutorials and hands on labs those will be included in the free tire so you don't have to worry about it and if anything comes up and anything is paid i'll let you know in advance whenever i'm going to do another hands-on or tutorial session so let's see how to host a static website on s3 so let's continue with our static website hosting part on s3 so let's search for the service s3 on aws console and i'll go over here and search for s3 and s3 management console will come up i'll click on create bucket and then i have to give a bucket name over here so you can select any bucket name so web host on s3 let's call this as the bucket and let's leave the aws region as the one that is already selected let's not do anything to the object ownership which says acls disabled which is recommended and uh, let's keep this as it is block all public access and further uh, for bucket versioning we don't want to enable it as of now so we'll keep it disabled only then for purpose of tax we are not going to add any tax as of now then comes default encryption so the bucket is currently being encrypted def by default sse uh, s3 encryption which is server side encryption provided by amazon itself so let us keep it as it is and there are some advanced settings so like object lock is it is kept as disabled so let it be the way it is and let's click on create bucket so once we click on create bucket it will create this bucket for us which is web hosting on s3 and once this bucket is being created uh, we'll go ahead and upload some objects to it so let's upload some uh, items to it so i'll i basically selected the bucket and i clicked on upload over here it brought me to this particular web page and once i am here i'll click on add files button and uh, these are the files which i would like to add so i added these two files and these two files will be uploaded in the bucket once i click on upload button so you can just click on upload button over here so the files are now being uploaded to our bucket then we create that we created just now now what we have to do is now let's go to properties and uh, these are the properties that we selected just now and they got updated and over here we have this option static website hosting so we look into this option uh, 
we'll click on this edit button and static website hosting two options are there so we'll click on this button which says enable and we will enable the static website hosting hosting type it says host a static website so we are going to select it and then we have to specify the home or default page of the website so whenever the website url is being hit what is the default page that you want to keep for that particular website so let's name it as index.html for the time being We don't have any error document as of now and we don't define any redirection rules then we'll click on save changes so once we have clicked on save changes uh, in the properties section we have basically told s3 that this particular bucket will be used for static website hosting and we have enabled this particular feature of static website hosting now let's go to permissions and in permissions we have to, uh, it says block all public access on. So that means as of now, uh, it will not allow you to access the resources. So for example, we are, uh, we are going to properties and we'll try to access our bucket over here. So let's click on this thing. So it says access denied. Also before going to our bucket, we have to do one more thing. In objects, we have to upload the index.html which we defined as the landing page. So we'll again click on upload and we'll go to add files and we'll select a simple index.html over here. And then we'll click on upload. So this will upload the default file which we want to be uploaded uh, to be reflected whenever we hit the uh, link or URL for our S3 bucket. Now let's once again go to properties. And so this is the link that you're going to use in order to access your bucket and the s3 website since it is saying forbidden as of now so what we will do we will go to permissions so once we are in permissions we are supposed to allow the public access to all the items that are present inside our bucket or all the objects that are present inside our bucket so we'll click on edit and we will click on this particular uh, uh, button and uh, we'll click on save changes and then in this text box we are going to write confirm in order to confirm that the changes are being reflected click on confirm now you will see that block all public access has been turned off now let's try to access this particular url once again so once again if it says forbidden so we need to do one more thing over here we have to make changes to the bucket policy let's go to bucket policy so bucket policy is also in your permissions tab only so you will go over here it says bucket policy you will click on edit I'll show you how you can make changes to your bucket policy in order to make your uh, website accessible through S3. Now there are two options, policy examples and policy generator. We'll click on policy generator. Uh, we'll land on this particular web page. Then in the drop down, we'll select S3 bucket policy and affect we will say allow and in principle, we will select asterisk because you want to allow everything that is being present in our S3 bucket. And then in actions, we are going to select get objects. So basically we want to give this permission to the users that they can fetch the objects, any object. And then it is asking for ARN. So for ARN, we can copy the ARN, bucket ARN that is mentioned over here. We'll copy the ARN and once the ARN is copied, we have to type slash after it and asterisk so that it allows us to access the objects and we'll click on add statement so once you have clicked on add statement button then you will click on generate policy so this is the policy that is being generated by policy generator you can copy this policy and you can go back you can close this tab and you can go back and paste that particular policy which we generated just now so this is the policy bucket policy which we are going to attach to this particular bucket we'll click on save changes so now we have given uh, access and we have attached a uh, bucket policy as well to our s3 bucket now let's try to access this particular url where our website is being hosted so now you can see uh, the index.html page it gets displayed whatever index.html page i uploaded it got displayed so that means you can access the s3 bucket by following all these three things so the first thing that you have to do is you have to create an s3 bucket second thing you have to do is you have to upload the objects 
third thing which you have to do is you have to go to properties and you have to enable the static website hosting and you have to tell the name of the landing page let's say index.html which you have uploaded in the bucket and finally you have to go to permissions and in permissions you have to remove this block public access you have to turn it off it will be on by default when you create a bucket then in the permissions overview in this particular section only you have to go down and you have to check bucket policy and you have to paste the bucket policy over here i'll leave the link uh, to this particular bucket policy if you want to refer to the bucket policy that we just generated i'll leave the link in the description box so you can use that for getting this bucket policy and uh, so that's it your website is being hosted over here and you can use it and now anyone can access this particular static website you can share the url and they can access it easily so that's it for today i hope you enjoyed the video and uh, you can um, delete the resources that you generated so let's see let's do the cleanup as well uh, before uh, closing off with the session so what we will do is we'll select the objects and we'll delete these objects from our bucket so it asks that you want to permanently delete these objects so we will say permanently delete so we will delete these objects okay so once these objects are being deleted we are going to go to our buckets we are going to select the bucket and we are going to delete and finally it says that i need to type the name of the bucket so let me select the name of the bucket and we'll put the name of the bucket over here in order to delete the bucket so the bucket is being deleted so if i go over here buckets you can see that there are no buckets so it's always good to clean the resources that you have created for your lab purposes so that you don't get charged and that's it for today i hope you enjoyed the video so please hit that subscribe button and give it a like thank you for watching and stay tuned for other videos on such aws lab and hands-on exercises thank you bye bye